Joining us now, Frederick Lawrence, distinguished lecturer at Georgetown Law and the secretary and CEO of the Phi Beta Kappa Society. Uh, thank you so much for being with us this morning, sir. I really appreciate it. Good let's, morning. Let's start with the, AC, the ACA. This was something, right, they essentially said, okay, you were never hurt by this law, so you have absolutely no standing to sue on this basis. Therefore, um, we're not going to move forward uh, with this. It, it does feel like this is likely the end of these types of cases, only because it's hard to argue that there's anyone that could bring such a case because of the, that mandate being zeroed out. But I'm curious if you think that there would be another route or if if, if there are going to be additional uh, challenges to this. I mean, Obamacare is so embedded in our in our society now. That's right. It does feel as if this is the end of the road. This is the third of the Obamacare challenges. The court upheld it each time, the first time five to four, next time six to three, and this time seven to two. I think the the size of the victory surprised people. Now, as you mentioned, be careful. This says less than people think it does. The challenge was to the constitutionality of Obamacare, and the court never reached that. The court said, just as you suggested, Casey, that the states involved, the individuals involved were not hurt by the constitutional violations they allege, and therefore they have no standing. But it does look as if no one is going to have standing to challenge this. So by a 7-2 to two vote, Justice Breyer, one of the most experienced people up there, put this coalition together of seven votes, leaving only the two most conservative or two of the most conservative justices, Justices Gorsuch and Alito, who said, sure, they're standing and they wanted to strike the law down. But seven to two and most significant, uh, both Justices Brett Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett, two appointments by President Trump, joined those seven justices saying that the law is going to remain in place. Yeah, because we ran through some of uh, what people said about Amy Coney Barrett during her, her confirmation, were you surprised by her vote here? What do you think that tells us about what kind of justice she's going to be? I think so far she appears to be positioning herself along with Justice Kavanaugh towards the center of this court. Now, make no mistake, center does not mean moderate. We have a court right now with six conservative justices, three extremely conservative justices, that's Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, and Neil Gorsuch, and then three conservative justices, that's Chief Justice Roberts and Justices Kavanaugh and Coney Barrett, and then, of course, the three liberals, Justices Breyer, Sotomayor, and Kagan. But Justice Barrett is not over there all the way on the right. She does appear to be uh, more towards the, let's call it, mainstream conservative than the extreme conservative on the court. Way too early to start making statements like this, but we're starting to see the early <laughs> signs of what her judicial career on the court's going to be. And look, for guys like me, this is high season. You know, we're watching the court make all these decisions right now, so we're really watching how the court's going to formulate. Yeah. I appreciate the uh, way too early pun, intended or not. And thank you for getting <laughs> that was so for you. To help us that was for you. A little bit better. I really appreciate it. Frederick Lawrence, thank you so much. Enjoy your weekend, sir. Fre uh, Frederick's book is Punishing Hate, Biased Crimes Under American Law.